So to avoid this mold, <clears throat> you can either one, unscrew both of these on both sides. There's two. These are your bilge drain plugs. If for some reason you're screwing around, it capsizes, tips over, water gets in the engine bay. Um, basically, these you unscrew, the water comes out. So you can unscrew these to allow ventilation to get into your engine bay. But you have to remember that you have to screw these back in when you're ready to go back out. Because if not, you're gonna end up sinking. And I hear this happens a lot. So these, before you go out, make sure those are screwed in. Part of what I do is leave myself a reminder as I'm hooking it up. Drain plugs. Anyway, your other option <clears throat> is to do like I do and remove the seats and keep one off if you store it in a garage. If you store it outside, uh, yeah, you might wanna leave those drain plugs open, but of course that still risks the uh, possibility of critters getting in there. But basically that's the reason why you keep those drain plugs unplugged is to avoid mold inside your engine bay. As you can see, there's the inside of my hull. There is no mold. Because I either keep the seat off or I keep the drain plugs off. So again, um, yeah, other people have taught me this, but I guess if you're a subscriber here, just uh, another tidbit from Red Right Return. Take it easy. Another thing, your wave runner may come with cleats. That's these things here. Instead of making those crazy sailor knots, God bless anyone of those of you people that can make those knots, I got this. This is $12, got it at a hardware store. <clears throat> came with two. What I do is I cable one side to the vessel as I'm in the water. And then I wrap this end around the dock on the, the cleat that's on the dock and then clip it that way so that you don't have to worry about uh, <laughs> your vessel getting away from you. If you want to mount a GoPro camera holder thing, do it on these handlebars. I don't know why I was screwing around with trying to mount it here on this front hood. It's uh, too angled. Uh, this is more flat. Clean the surface really, really good. Uh, stick it on there, push, push, push. <laughs> and then of course, um, I'm also going to take some string and tie it to the GoPro and to here, just in case, well, tie it to the GoPro and to here <laughs> in case something stupid happens and it flies off. That's just my recommendation. So going fishing tomorrow, make a video of that, see if I can get some top speed for this thing. See you tomorrow. Let's talk about this thing right here. This I highly recommend if you watch my other channel, Kinetic Energy 1085. <clears throat> I do have a lot of videos about my 2018 F-150 FX4. Use this for off-roading, but I also recommend keeping it for taking your wave runner out, your boat out. You're gonna experience some kind of situation, maybe at some point, where you might get a slow leak, or you might get somewhat of a flat, and if you're nowhere near anything, then you're probably gonna wanna get one of these to at least put some air in your tire or fill them up when they're low for any reason. Sometimes when the seasons change, then so does the air pressure. So this does come with a cord that can plug into your, I'm just gonna say any vehicle that now has a power inverter. This will not work on your car. It only works on my F-150 with a power inverter. Or you can get the 20 volt battery that goes with it. So these tires say 90 pounds PSI max. You never wanna run your tires at their max, number one, because the, the tread will wear um, here, which is, which is the center from being overinflated. Two, as you're driving, that creates heat. The air expands and your tires gain more pressure. So you don't wanna have a blowout. 
I'm gonna make these at 80, maybe 75 PSI. I'm gonna show you how to work this thing, but instead of using the cable, we're gonna go get the battery. flying saucers and balloons going on in our country right now. If anyone knows what that was, let me know in the comments. Anyway, the 20 volt battery. So we're just gonna use this. And we're gonna turn it on. Now, obviously it's going to show you the PSI here. Turning this dial, as you can see, We'll set the desired pressure. First thing I'm going to do right now is check what the pressure currently is. All right, we're on record. We're going to take this off. Don't you go anywhere. I'm going to undo this. I'm going to hook it, screw it in, just like any other pump. All right, we are at. 77.6 or 7 PSI in this tire. I'm gonna leave it there. So again, you wanna allow room for expansion. Again, imagine, for example, let's say you have your F-150 and you have the cable that plugs into your power inverter, which is on your dash. That cable is about, you know, as long as this trailer, but so you have your truck and then it has to go all the way on the trailer to your tire. How are you gonna, how are you gonna do that? That's why I recommend also having the battery so that you can, in an emergency situation, inflate your um, Wave Runner tires. I should teach you a little bit about tire pressure, a little something extra to have. Like I said, you can see why I use this on my other channel, Kinetic Energy 1085. Um, it shows pictures of the F-150 on the beach and talks about airing down your tires for better grip, etc. So we are going to leave this pressure as is. I'm going to check the RSI and make sure it's the same. Also, I recommend getting a spare wheel, which is what I'm going to do, and uh, I can't fix a flat. I'd rather be extremely prepared. One gets a slow leak, one gets a flat. I've got this. I have freaking um, fix a flat. I got a jack. I got an extra wheel. All right, you all have a good day. Let's do some fishing tomorrow. And as always, Semper Fi. Yep.